I believe grading teachers is nonsense. And I also think most lesson observations are a waste of time. Now, obviously, they're provocative things to say, and there's lots of nuance required. So I would ask you in this video, underneath you'll see the blog where I've explained this in greater depth. But here's the key slide. And I just wanna take a moment to go through it with you. I guess the question I pose to school leaders is this question here. Are you in the business of measuring teachers or nurturing them, growing them to develop? Now, of course, most teachers, most school leaders want to grow their teachers. Um, when we can't think about school accountability, we want teachers to be held to account. We want the highest standards. We can't leave learning to chance, pupil outcomes, etc. So it's a fine balance. And I guess in terms of lesson observation, this is how I view the, the current challenge. Now, graded lessons for people watching here in England, you know that was quashed. Uh, 2013, the research by Blue Sky and the Mike Travel Experiences, particularly in FE settings, is that about 30% of schools and colleges in England still choose to grade their teachers for whatever reason. My provocation is don't work in those types of institutions if you can. There are 25,000 other schools that you can work in. So on the left hand side, graded schools, um, Grading one-off lesson observations versus ungraded teacher reflection diaries. In terms of frequency, the measuring side is three times a year, often once a term formally, with lots of learning walks, lots of drop-ins. And I'm no saint here, I've done all this myself in my career. Uh, now I've seen the light, I suppose, uh, proportionate to teacher time. I guess, you know, part-time teachers, how many lessons I teach. If we can build in regular conversations, uh, and of course there's a lot more detail in here and in the blog, then I can make micro observations that are proportionate to the teacher's timetable and how much time I have as an observer or as a coach. We'll know that in this uh, landscape that feedback is often irregular compared to if it's structured, built into a teacher's time, then it can be a regular conversation, again a micro conversation. Most of these formal observations tend to be 15, 20, 30 minutes, sometimes 60 minutes, often imposed on by the line manager. There's often a checklist, and we all know these types of scenarios. When they become uh, quite toxic, they then lead to attrition. Not good for anyone, really. Um, compared to the other side, where if we can become more research-informed, develop teacher reflection, teacher starts to think carefully about the things that they want to improve, then it's teacher-led. Um, and I guess this one from my good friend Chris Moyes, who first posed this idea to me, and I can understand the concept now, and I've been through every lesson observation performer known to mankind. Um, working on a blank piece of paper, again, needs a lot of context behind this, but where a coach, mentor can pose questions, record evidence through uh, photographs of children's work, voice recordings of what the teacher says, and then it builds, particularly in today's world with technology, adding in do, into an online document that then can be exported as a PDF. Uh, this requires a lot of structure behind the scenes for an observer, observer to be able to do this reliably, but that would be your observation form or your, at least your starting point. Uh, and I think this, again, please read the blog, a lot more detail and depth behind the scenes, but this model is gonna support your teachers. So I guess the crux of it is, do you want uh, to work in a school that grows teachers and colleagues alongside you, or do you want this side? I know what I prefer. I suspect I know what most of you prefer. Um, so which one's it going to be?